today I decided I was going to make a video about the differences between Australia and America. Obviously I'm American because of my accent. I live in America but I have family in Australia and I visited Australia this summer. I caught on some differences between the two countries that I decided I wanted to make a video about. I was there for six weeks. Um, Australians use like different vocabulary in terms of like slang and they also shorten the words and they also use different words than Americans. Americans call flip-flops flip-flops. But Australians call flip-flops thongs. Like if you were to come to America and you would say thong, you would be meaning like the underwear thong. In Australia, university is uni. They never really say the word university, the whole university word. They just say uni. And then when you say college in Australia, it's really more referring to like community college, not really like university. So university is like higher up than college. Yeah, when you say college, they think you're talking about like a trade school or a technical college. Australia, they refer to sweaters as jumpers. They don't really, I don't know, I think they do say sweatshirts, but usually they just call it a jumper. Like, like they shorten their words. So instead of like saying like the full word, like university, they just call it uni. Instead of like afternoon, they say arvo. Instead of breakfast, they say brekkie. Instead of barbecue, they say barbie. Instead of, like, they call people mates, obviously. Like they're like, today mate. Like that's like the most like common thing. Like everyone knows Australians say mate. Avocado is avo. I think they have these liquor shops that they call bottle o's. But I don't think I saw one when I was in Australia. Americans don't really have like a liquor shop. In America, if you wanted to get liquor, you'd go to the gas station. But they don't call it gas stations either they don't use the word gas station they say um petrol station or they say servo mcdonald's is referred to as maccas mosquitoes are mozzies and another thing is like the date format so when they write down a date so usually in america you would write down the month and then the date so like for example like january 15th it would be 1 slash 15 slash the year so for example like 2022 in australia it would be 15 slash 1 slash 2022. So the day comes before the month, whereas in America, the month comes before the day. They call bathrooms toilets. Like, I don't think they really refer to toilets as bathrooms. Like, they would never really say the word bath. Like, I don't know, but I never really heard anyone say bathroom. I, I might be wrong. Like, the government is a lot more, the Queensland government, which is where I visited, I visited Brisbane, which is in Queensland. Queensland government is a lot more strict about, like, driving rules and stuff like that, making sure that people are following the regulations and the laws on the road than, like, America, because, like, in America, or well, maybe it's just, like, where I live, like, around Chicago is where people aren't always like following the speed limits right like it says 70 miles an hour oh that's another difference it's like um miles versus kilometers they use kilometers we use miles uh they use centimeters and we use inches anyway the transportation is different too because they just are a lot more strict about driving rules whereas like america is more like lenient i suppose so they're just very like making sure that they're actually like following the speed limit whereas like where i live in america it's like people are always speeding people always surpassing that speed limit um um, there's also like red light cameras at intersections. I think every single like intersection you come across, like if you have your Google Maps or your Apple Maps on, you'll see that it says red light camera ahead almost every single intersection there is in Australia. They're also very strict about like you're not supposed to use your phone when you're driving, like when you're using, they'll catch you because they have these cameras at the red light intersection. So like when I was there, like my family, my cousins, my aunts, make sure that they have their phone like away. It's just not tolerated at all to use your phone while you're driving. So America like you drive on the right side of the road in Australia they drive on the left side of the road within the car you're driving you're sitting on the uh, right side of the car like where the passenger would be in America is where the driver is in Australia and then the blinkers and the wipers are on opposite sides so like in Australia the blinkers are actually on the right side whereas in America the blinkers are on the, the left side and then the wipers are on the, on the left side like when I try to drive in Australia I'm trying to like turn left or turn right and I so I use my like left side but that's actually the the wiper side so I actually I keep turning on the wiper when I mean to turn on the blinker. So in Brisbane, so inside the city is like the buses have their own path, like the public buses. They have their own little routes, like they go separately. I think it's like a little bit underground too. And then they have these like really cool like bus stations. And it's all like, it's very private, I suppose. Like you have to get on the platform. It's almost as if it's like a subway, a little bit, but it's not really underground. It's above ground, but like sometimes you do go like a little bit underground. But it's just really cool because it completely avoids all of the traffic during rush hour. So the buses are literally a lot faster to take. Like if you work in the city, like it's a lot faster to just take the bus into the city than it is to drive into the city. But like if you go to Australia and you literally like just go walk on the road, you'll see these like giant signs. It says like $1,000 
fine if you don't wear your seatbelt. And it says Queensland government underneath it. So they're like really strict about it. Like my family, my extended family is just like super cautious about making sure that everyone has their seatbelt on when the car is moving. I don't know how it works. I don't know if people like, I don't know if they hire people to collect these scooters and bikes around the city, charge them, but I don't know what it is. But like basically there's no scooter rack, there's no bike rack or anything. People literally just leave their like scooters these public scooters, they just leave them on the side of the road, on the sidewalk, or in a park, anywhere. They just leave them. Obviously, you have to pay for it, but then, like, after that, someone else can just pick it up and just, like, take it without having to, like, leave it on a rack. So, I don't know how they charge. Maybe it's, like, a solar charging thing, but I have no idea, but it's, like, super cool that you can just, like, pick one up from the side and just, like, ride on it. Parking spaces, I feel like, in Australia, are a lot smaller in America. Slightly smaller. Actually, not, like, a lot smaller, but slightly small. I can notice like, that most of the time we went to an Asian places, the Asian restaurants, but like waiters don't really greet themselves they don't like introduce themselves like in america waiters and waitresses they'll like go up to the table and then they'll be like hi my name is like how are you today you know can i get you started off with like like they'll be like a lot more like hospitable in australia they don't really greet themselves they just like ask you what you want right away um or like what drink you want right away there's something called like a check back in the serving industry like uh two minutes after they get their food you go back to the table and you're like how's the food how does it taste you know like is there anything else i can get for you but in australia i didn't really like i didn't really experience that they didn't really like come and be like can i get anything else for you is the food okay and stuff like that is this cooked to your perfection like is it cooked to your taste or whatever they don't really do that like after the meal is over you you kind of expected to get up pay for the bill yourself like you go up to the stand or like to the whoever and then you like pay up front you don't really get the bill like given to you ice water i don't really think that's a thing either because i think most of the time it's just water in a cup they don't really serve like ice water i feel like america americans like ice with everything extra ice with everything but like other countries it's so rare like even in europe like it's so rare to like get ice with your beverages they'll be like i don't have we don't we don't have ice but water is free in australia paying for water is just such a ripoff i feel like also there's a lot more cuisines like it's just only pertaining to where i'm living like there's a lot more like cuisines in brisbane in brisbane specifically than like where i am living diversity of food Food. There's so many options over there. Around Chicago, it's very limited. In America, we call it to go. They call that takeaway. So in America, entrees are the main meals. In Australia, entrees are the appetizers. So if you see entree on a menu in Australia, that is an appetizer. They have grocery stores inside malls. So like you literally walk into a mall and then there's like an entire section like dedicated. It's like a grocery store, like a giant grocery store inside a mall. Um, whereas in America, it's like you wouldn't like where I'm living, you wouldn't really find giant grocery store inside a mall. Like if you wanted to buy groceries, you would buy groceries from a building that's independent of a mall like it wouldn't be inside a mall also coles like c-o-l-e-s and coles k-o-h-l-s they're spelled differently but when i first went there um they said coles and i i kind of like in my mind i was thinking about the clothing store like k-o-h-l-s but they were actually talking about like the coles like the grocery store kmart is like their walmart i suppose they don't really have walmart there like in terms of, like brisbane at least doesn't have walmarts they have kmarts and those like big shopping malls they have these automated parking lots so like you know like usually when you go to these parking lots that you have to pay usually before you actually like enter the parking lot you have to get like a parking ticket after you are back and you want to get your ticket like you know what i mean like you have to get a ticket before you leave the place but in australia you can just go into the parking lot and then there is those like gates those gates are open your car goes in and then they just know because i think they have these cameras that look at your license plate and they just like take a picture of your license plate if you overstay the two hour minimum because like for example some malls if you stay more than two hours if you park more than two hours they start charging you but less than two hours is free so they know if you stay more than two hours based on just like the license plate and then once you like try to exit the parking lot no ticket or anything you don't have to take any ticket and they just know like how many hours you stay just based on that like license plate when you went in so you don't even have to like touch like any machine to give you a ticket so it's like pretty cool it's like magic there's a lot less homelessness in brisbane like in the city it's in like major u.s cities like la or new york city i mean there are a couple but like not nearly as many as there are in the major u.s cities ambulances are free 
In Queensland, I'm not sure about other places in Australia, but ambulance services are provided free of charge by your state government. And then it says here basic health care is free. So like doctor visits are free. Employers are required to contribute to your 401k. Well, they don't call it a 401k. They call it a superannuation and required to give paid leave. I think it varies between employers. They have a lot more like benefits in terms of employment, benefits in terms of like pay time off. Uh, minimum wage is $14.67 an hour, American dollars, which is about $20, 20 Australian dollars per hour. In America, I think it varies. Minimum wage varies from state to state. The lowest minimum wage in America is like $7.50 an hour. Actually, the federal minimum wage is $7.25 an hour in America. I don't even know like how people can pay bills with that. Depends on the state in Australia, but I'm not really sure. But like on weekends, you get paid more than just a normal rate to get paid more. It's up to double, I believe. And then also dollars are on coins. So they have a $2 coin and they have a $1 coin. Whereas in America, we don't have like $2 coins and $1 coins. We have $2 bills and $1 bills. They also don't have quarters and they don't have pennies. Australians don't even call these, they don't even know what quarters or pennies are. They don't use nickels and dimes and that kind of word. Oh, another thing is they don't use the words freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. Like they don't use those things in school. They just say like year nine, year 10, year 11, year 12. So this is a 20 cent coin two dollar coin 20 cent coin like they wouldn't say dime they would just say 10 cents i guess this is a dollar coin this is like a 50 cent coin also in australia like credit scores are not as important as america makes it it's like in america like credit scores it's important to have a good credit score for home loans for car loans just to get like the lowest interest rate it's important to like have that credit score even just to get an apartment landlords will look at your credit history to make sure that good credit history whereas in australia i feel like credit scores aren't as important but like it's perfectly fine if you're 25 and you don't have a credit card like like everyone there just like pays with their debit card tipping culture is different over there which is a big one because like in America I feel like other countries definitely frown upon Americans for having employers that underpay their workers or have like customers compensate for their employees salary but in Australia tipping is not really a thing like in restaurants or like hairdressers or like uber drivers taxi drivers like they don't really expect tips from you so like what's on your bill is basically what's on your bill because you don't have to like add a tip write down a tip and then sign you know i'd like to add that servers and waitresses they're not relying on tips to make a living maybe like the service i feel like is a little slower also because they're not like as desperate for the money like because part of american tipping culture is they make sure that servers make sure you're well taken care of so they know they want to provide you a good service so that they get good tips but in australia that's not really a thing so they're not gonna be like trying to please you in every single way just for your money because they're getting paid no matter what the experience is a little bit different when you dine in at restaurants in my opinion they're not relying on your money like your tips in order to get paid in australia sales tax is already included in the price of your purchase so anything you buy like from food to like products if you go to like shopping or whatever what you see on the price tag in the store is what you're gonna pay when you check out so it's not like you know you have to add an additional five percent tax like sales tax or seven percent sales tax for like the majority of states in america charge sales tax on top of like any kind of food or product or service or whatever it's nice i actually really like how sales tax is included to be honest i don't like having to pay additional sales tax for anything so and then also like recreational activities like a night out like if you go like bowling or golfing or watch a movie or anything like that like i feel like it's it's like slightly more expensive to do those things in australia in australia it's like at least 20 dollars a person so cell phone plans are super cheap in australia so you can buy like a year-long plan 10 to 25 gigabytes of data per month for like $200 for the entire year not even $20 a month like in America I feel like it's so normal for people to pay like at least $50 a month just for their phone bill it's a lot of money just for your phone bill you can buy like month to month it's not gonna be like over $50 a month like in America it's a lot more common for college students like after they graduate high school when they turn 18 to move out for college or university they would like live away from home they would like find a place 
place to live or live in a dorm like the college dorms um, so it's like the normal like college experience for college students in a, in america to live away but in australia it's more normal for college students to kind of like live at home with their parents even throughout college like you don't have to even make any payments towards your student loans they don't call it student loans they call it something called hex loan you don't have to pay back your student loans until you make a certain amount so until you make like a minimum of forty eight thousand dollars australian per year they don't even like expect you to make any monthly payments towards your student loans until you make forty eight thousand dollars in queensland at least they just automatically deduct your like, student loan payments from your paycheck which is actually like really interesting because i feel like in america how would they know like for example if you make your money off of tips like and you're getting paid in cash every night like in america i don't know how they would take that money from you you can't just take cash away in australia they just take a small percentage of your income towards your student loans once you make forty eight thousand dollars a year in america for student loan payments like, i don't really think there's really like a minimum threshold that you have to make i think there's a grace period like a six month grace period after you graduate school after six months that after that grace period you're expected to to make payments towards your student loans and you like do that through your like website where you where you borrowed the money you don't like get it automatically deducted from your paycheck whether or not you're making a certain amount whether or not you're making like twenty thousand a year or eighty thousand a year they still expect you to make those payments so i do really like how australia does that is like they care a lot more about making sure that their citizens are like making enough i feel like it's a lot more common in high school for high school like you uniforms to be worn. Maybe it's just public schools in America, like public schools, like I, I never really wore uniforms at all for high school. Like I, I literally wore whatever I wanted in high school. Like I feel like in America, it's usually just private schools that make you wear a uniform. In Australia, you basically wear uniform for the most part in high school. Not only that, is like they're always like walking home. In America, like I feel like it's a, it's a lot more common for students to drive to school once they turn like the legal age to drive in the state. For example, like in my state, you can drive at 16. So in my school, what, like in my high school, once people turn 16, the majority of people will drive to school and then they will park at the parking lot um, and then they'll drive home from school too. And then they'll pay like a parking lot fee for the entire year just to park at the school. But like, whereas in Australia, I feel like that's like not as common. And you would usually like either like take the bus or uh, like walk or maybe like just have someone pick you up maybe there's no fafsa in australia but they do have this thing called a youth allowance where basically the government gives you a kind of like a stipend it's, it's kind of just like it's specifically for people who are students from the ages of i think it's from 18 to something um maybe 18 to 24 yeah youth allowance is there for like college students yeah that's like their version of the fafsa i suppose and the youth allowance i don't really think that's not really given directly to the school like to the college they directly give the youth allowance to the student whereas in, like for the fafsa in america um the students don't receive the fafsa money directly the fafsa money f actually goes from the government directly to the school usually and then anything that's left over goes to the student but like the government doesn't usually just give FAFSA money directly to the student it goes to the school and then in terms of bettering the environment slash conserving energy in Australia there's a switch on the power outlets so there's this like little button that you have to like press on and off in order to turn on and off the electricity um, I think that's to make sure like you know waste any electricity when you're not using the power outlet uh, the outlets are shaped differently it's like the in australia they have those buttons that turn on and off the electricity but in america it literally just looks like this and there's no like button to press on and off it's just completely like that outlet is also a different shape so it's just like two straight lines in america in australia it's more like see how they're slanted instead of straight in order to protect the environment shopping centers will actually charge people for plastic bags i'm not sure like i think they also charge you for paper bags as well i notice that people usually bring their own reusable bags to stores whether it's grocery stores or whether it's a mall they'll charge you i don't think it's like 20 cents or something like that whereas in america it's always free a uh, grocery store you go to target you go to like tj maxx you, oh <laughs> tk maxx is another thing australia has tk maxx instead of tj maxx but most people do not bring a reusable bag in america 
America. We all just take those free bags, those free plastic bags from the shopping centers. Toilets in Australia have two options. They have half flush and they have full flush. Whereas in America, the only thing we have is just one lever. We just have full flush. We don't like do half flush, full flush. I think in Europe too, they have half flush and full flush, but America doesn't care. <laughs> we just don't care. There are no plastic straws in Australia. I don't think I used a single plastic straw in my six weeks in Australia. Like they only have paper straws. In America, most of the time, I think half the time or more, you have the opportunity to use a plastic straw. I honestly prefer plastic straws a lot more, even though it's not good for the environment, but like at least they don't get soaked and soggy after like 20 minutes. And also in Australia, people don't really use clothing dryers. Although I think they still do, but like not as much as Americans. So like when they dry their clothes, Australia, they basically just line dry what is outside or they have like line drying with clothes pins and they just like actually like manually hang every single piece of clothing up. <laughs> Whereas in, in America, we literally just take clothes from the washer and we just throw it in the dryer and then we turn it on and we're done. For laws, the drinking age in Australia is 18. Whereas in America, it's 21. I think in all of America, throughout the entirety of the US is 20. 21, even though it's it doesn't make sense why they would do 21 because if you're of legal age at 18 then why do you have to wait until 21 to legally drink it doesn't make sense there is no need to go for security when going to a lot of things security is a lot more relaxed in australia in terms of like in america they make sure that you go through like screening like for concerts they make sure like you know sometimes they limit the bag size you have to like bring a clear plastic bag in in order to like get through into the concert and that's because of guns even just going into a college into a college library in america they make sure that you're a student there before you they let you in you're not allowed to just walk into a school library in america like they will check your student id before letting you in whereas in australia you can basically just walk wherever you want you can just like go into a college and just like walk into a library without even being a student there it's a safety issue Issue. so like there's more security measures in America. In Australia you're required to vote during voting season whereas in America we are not required to vote. Australia there's no such thing as a social security number they do call it a different thing they call it a TFN or a tax file number. Now in terms of animals I believe I saw a lot of birds that I have never seen in my life. <laughs> so a lot of birds they make a lot of different sounds like very strange sounds and then there's also like a lot of animals in Australia that don't exist in America such as lorikeets and kangaroos if you go to Australia and you just like even just walk around anywhere you'll come across animals that you have never seen only native to Australia like, that's all the differences between Australia and America that I could find in my six weeks of visiting Australia so hope you enjoyed this video and hope you found it informative thank you for watching and like and subscribe